Hello, welcome to the Center for Visual Arts um, Expressions Camp. Um, my name is Natalie Bilter, and today's project we are going to be doing a weaving project. So if you go into your box or your bag, you will find um, a plastic bag like this. It'll have a picture of like a little woven art creation like this. And so you can pull out all your materials from in this bag. Um, so you should have, in this bag at least, you should have a, a piece of cardboard with some splits at the top and at the end, and you'll have some string wrapped around it. You should have a great big bundle of yarn and ribbon and so forth. Um, make sure to check on the back of your bag that you have two pieces of blue tape. Um, and the last thing you need, um, hopefully around your house, you have a pair of scissors, which you may need. All right, so for this project, we're gonna learn a little bit about textures. Um, so for starters, um, I guess based on this bag <laughs> right here, um, you have some paperwork right here and it kind of um, talks about what texture is. So basically texture is basically how something feels. So if you feel this ribbon, you'll feel all sorts of different textures. For example, you may have some, I don't know, what type of string or yarn this is, but it kind of looks like a shoelace. But if you feel it, it's very rough and coarse. Um, you have some like raffia stuff in here. It's very shiny. Um, and this stuff feels very smooth, but also rough at the same time, I suppose. Um, and then you have, um, for example, for me, I just dropped the piece. Um, you have this really fuzzy stuff right here and it's very soft and smooth. And then you have like regular yarn right here and it's pretty, I guess you'd say it's kind of rough. Um, but anyway, so you can tell texture how, by how something feels, but also by how the light hits it. So um, in your paperwork, you should have this really handy piece of paper and it kind of talks about how um, the texture is depending on how the light hits it. So for example, on here, um, like a rough textured object, um, the, the light source hits it um, very unevenly. So let's see. Oh, so for example, this stuff right here, it, it's kind of rough, but also smooth. But if you look at it, like the light hits it very unevenly, like there's some, like the light hits it all over in some places and some places it's very dark. Um, and then you have things that are shiny. Um, and this reflects a bright highlight. I'm going to use this example again, but you, there's a very bright highlight on this piece of raffia. Uh, and then with smooth textures, let's see, uh, the light hits it very evenly. So I'm going to use this piece of yarn right here. I can't really tell where the light source is, but um, kind of the light source kind of hits it very evenly on the top. And then you have um, matte textures, which is basically the light hits it, but the light is very dull looking. So, I'll use this example right here. So, the light hits it, but you can't really see where, like, very, the light source is not very bright. So anyway, you can kind of play around with your um, ribbon and your yarn to see kind of what textures each of them have. So for starters, you're going to take your piece of cardboard with all the slips in it. And you should have some string wrapped around it. And so you can just unwind it. So first, first step, we're just going to um, start setting up our cardboard. So we're going to take our piece of string. You may get kind of tangled with all your other ribbons and so forth. And so you're going to kind of identify which um, side is the back. I think, I think I'm going to use this part for the back. There's some little black dots on it, so I don't really want to see that on my piece. So I'll just use that. You're going to take your, your string and you're going to go to the, one of the ends on the top. And you're going to lay your string. And you're going to kind of tug your string into that little slit. Then I'm going to maybe leave uh, maybe a couple inches on the back so you see my strings hanging down close to the edge but not at the edge. And then I'm going to take a piece of tape from the back of this bag right here. Oops. 
do take a little bit to get it off. Then on your back piece where the string's kind of hanging down ever so slightly, I'm going to put my piece of tape right over top of that. So that way it stays nice and snug. Then we're gonna go over to the front right here and we're going to go to the next slit and we're going to weave in our string. Oops. Just like that. So then we get like a little, whoops. Gotta think for a second. Oh, yes. So we're gonna, never mind, ignore what I just said. So we're going to have our string come all the way down to this bottom slit that kind of parallels. So the first slit at the very bottom, and we're gonna gently tug it through. So then we have one piece of string that kind of starts up here and ends close to the bottom. Then we're gonna to go to the back right here. And we're going to kind of make a loop into our next slit. Whoops, you can flip your piece over. So anyway, you'll have a very tiny little stitch looking thing right there. And then you're gonna go back to the front and you're gonna to go to the second slit at the very bottom or the top, I'm not sure anymore which is the top and which is the bottom. And you're gonna tug that through. So then now you have two um, pieces of string kind of parallel each other. And then we'll go to the back and we'll make another little loop. See, we have a little stitch right there. And then we'll go back to the front. And we'll go to the third little slit. And now we have through three um, I'm trying to think of the word for this. Um, pieces of string that kind of are straight and parallel to each other. And then we'll go back to the back. And we'll go to the fourth slit. And we'll tug our piece of yarn in here. You may have to bend um, your cardboard a little bit. And then we'll go back to the bo um, bottom on the front and go to the fourth slit on the bottom or the top, wherever that is. And then we'll go to the back again. And we'll make another stitch. I'm gonna call it a stitch. See, here we have another one right there. And then we'll go back to the front. And go, I think this is the fifth stitch. Or fifth slit. I'll make another. And I'm just gonna kind of keep checking to make sure that um, all my stitches end up on the back side. These things and all my nice line lines end up on the front. So back to the back and make a little loop onto the sixth stitch. And go all the way to the, go back to the front and make another line. And just kind of Keep double checking yourself so if you're on the back make sure you make a loop with your stitch like that and if you're on the front make sure you make a, a line like so forth all right and we'll make another loop on the back and we'll go to the front and we're almost done yay another loop All right, so I'm almost done. So I should have one line left. So I should only have one little slit left here at the bottom. I'm gonna loop that through and then I'll go back to the back where my tape is. And I have all this excess string right here. Now I'm going to lay the string kind of down a little bit. And then I'll cut the string kind of where it meets the middle of the cardboard. So right about here maybe. So now we have a piece of string kind of hanging down. And I'm just going to move that string off to the side. And then I will take this piece of blue tape right here, the last one. And I'll go to the back and I'll kind of lay my string flat. And I'll just put some tape over that. So now we have an ugly side and a very pretty side that looks kind of 
very pleasing to the eye. All right, so now we have our setup all ready. So now we are going to start weaving. So you can take your first bit of ribbon, oops, trapping some. I would recommend starting off with a longer piece. I think I'm going to take this beautiful turquoise. You can kind of pick out which colors you want to use. Maybe you want to go for a certain color scheme. So maybe you want to do like cool colors like blues and greens. Or maybe you want to do warm colors like reds and oranges and yellows. So anyway, you're going to pick out which side you want to be the top. I think this will be my top right here. And you can start on the left side or the right side, whichever one works better for you. I am right-handed, so I'm probably going to start off on the left side. All right, and I'm going to show this on the bottom. So you're going to put your, take your piece of string or yarn or ribbon, and you're going to loop it under this first string right here. And you're going to maybe pull so you have maybe about three inches or so on this opposite side. And then you're simply going to tie a knot. So I'm going to bring both of my ends up like so. And I'll take this shorter end and I'll wind it around this longer end to make a loop. And I'll put the short end through the loop. I'm going to try to push up, push my loop all the way kind of towards the end, the very, um, where the, the string meets the slit. And so I have this tiny little knot right here. Then I'll take my scissors and I will cut off um, most of the string. I'll leave a little end, I mean, a little bit where it comes close to the knot. Here we go. And now we're ready to get started. So this um, may be a little tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, it goes, it pretty much flies by. So we're gonna do a method where we go over and out, like in and out. So we're going to, I'm gonna take my yarn and under this second string right here, this one, I am simply going to go under that one. And so I have my yarn under this piece of string right here, and I'm just going to gently tug. So now we have a little piece right here where it goes under the yarn, and then under the, for the next one, this third piece of string right here, we are going to go over. So if I lay it like this, the yarn simply goes over that one. So then for this fourth one right here, we're going to go under. And gently put the piece of yarn underneath that piece of string and gently tug. So you can kind of get your yarn a little bit tight. See, just like that. And for this next one right here, we'll simply go over. So then we'll head over to the next one, this one right here, and we'll go under. And if it helps, you can, um, and you're, um, you can talk it out. So you can, while you're doing this, you can go under. You say under and over to kind of help remind yourself. All right, and for the next one, we'll simply go over that one. And then technically it's already over, so we'll go off to the next one, this one right here, and we'll go under. And gently tug it. And you can kind of fix your yarn so you can kind of get it straight. All right, and so for the next one, we're going to go over, which we already are. So we're gonna go off to the, to the next level. So what you're gonna do is if this string right here if this yarn is over this one right here, on our next level, we're going to go under. So you'll just kind of loop your string. Hopefully, I wonder if I can show it with my hands up. All right, so I'm gonna be looking at the camera so you guys can see. So I'm gonna, oops. All right, so I am going to take this PC yarn right here and go under, just like that. And so you'll have this big loop here on the side and you can gently tug it. And so if I leave the yarn like this, it's going to leave this big gap. So what I want to do is I can kind of fix the piece of yarn. So it kind of 
these next to each other. And just gently tug it. You don't want to tug too much, otherwise, um, well, you'll see later your um, your weaving project will start to bend, kind of. All right, so if we went under for this one, we'll go over for the next one. And if we went over for this one, we'll go under for the next one. And then we'll go over. I wonder if I can duck this down so you can see better. If I lay it like this, maybe you can see. So we'll go over this one and over the neck, under the next. And then over, under, over, under. And you'll start to get a little faster each time each time we do this. And so for this one right here, we went under. So for the next level, we're gonna go over. So we'll just le um, let our piece of yarn hang over top of the next level. Then we'll go to the second string and we'll go under. And we have this big loop right here. So I'm just gonna gently tug and kind of push the piece of yarn up a little bit. Then we'll go over this one, and under, over, and under, over, and under. The one trick that I use that helps and goes by a little quicker is um, I just simply go under every other one. I know that sounds kind of obvious, but you can kind of skip the um, the over part. So I'll just go under every other one. And once you get the hang of this, you can definitely do this little trick. And it makes it go by really fast. So as you can see, we're on the next level and we are under this string. So for this next level, we're gonna start with going under. I'm just gonna skip and go to the second string right away and just go under. And it's definitely okay if you make a couple of mistakes, maybe for a couple we went over twice or under twice, and that's okay. I think that'll kind of give like a fun uh, texture towards it, I think. Or I think once you're all finished, it'll kind of make it look really interesting. So you'll be fine. Don't worry, you can make a couple of mistakes. So um, on right here, I have maybe just a couple of inches left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up another piece of yarn for my bundle and make sure you do, you pick out maybe a piece of ribbon or string that has a different texture. So I think I'm gonna choose this one. It's got some polka dots on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie this one to this piece of blue string right here. So I'm gonna match these up right like this. So they kind of line up. So I'm gonna take the end here and I'm gonna fold it down make a loop like so here's my loop and I'll take the end right here and I'll just thread it through the loop and I'll make sure that I have both of them and my fingers at the same time and I'll kind of take my fingers right here and kind of push it so the knot ends at the very end and this was a piece uh, like a short piece of ribbon but anyway close to the knot but not too close I will Cut off the excess and just lay it out to the side. It'll be snibbles. So now we have a bit longer piece of ribbon yarn. And so we'll just continue on. So for this one right here, I am over the string. So for the next level, I'm gonna go under. It may seem kind of silly to use a bunch of different textures for this. It may be kind of more pleasing to the eye to use a bunch of smooth textures, but it'll provide some really nice variation and kind of make it really interesting to look at. And if you really don't like some of these strings, you can maybe look around your house to see if there's any fun other pieces of ribbon that you'd like to use. For example, maybe, um, I don't know, you have some like old pieces of cloth that you can cut up and make into some fun strips that you can use. 
can get really funky with the textures that you want to use for this project. All right, and I have a, well, I only got a little bit in, so I have a couple inches left. So I'm going to make sure I pick out another piece. Let's see. Um, I will use this really fuzzy stuff. This is actually really fun to work with. So like before, I'll match both of these up so they're parallel with each other. And I'll smooth it out so they line up nicely. And I'll make a loop. And I'll put the end through the loop. And I'll cut off the axis. And we will continue on. And I'm noticing that this video is getting a little long, so I will, after this loop right here, I will go off to my almost finished one so I can show you how to finish this off. So if you may notice, um, with your knot, it sometimes gets a little bulky. So what you want to do is you kind of may, you need to thread it through a little bit so it can, goes along with your ribbon as you thread. I have some little gaps right in here, so I'm just going to push that up a little bit, just very gently. And while you're weaving, you want to make sure that you don't weave too tight, like you don't pull too tightly, because otherwise your creation will start to bend. All right, so I'm under this one, so I'll go over the next one. Okay. Sometimes you may have to talk yourself through this. I do that with a lot of things. Alrighty. And you'll start to see these really cool strips of color and textures as you do this. Great. I'm going to go off to, um, so I have this one right here that I was working on. So I'm just going to go off to this one. So as you can see, um, I pulled a little tightly so you can see that it starts to curve. So up here it's pretty, there's like this very short gap in between the edge and my woven creation. And as you can see, it's like it's Closer to the middle, it's kind of bended inwards a little bit, but that's okay. I think that pretty much happens a lot. So anyway, I'm going to continue on on this piece. So I'll take this and I'll go very fast for this so that way you can see the end. But also you can see I kind of have some cool line streaks of colors and all different textures. So if you feel it with your hands, you can feel all sorts of different textures. this through. Cut a little close to the end. And you may notice while you're doing this you have some knots that kind of stick out and you can leave those there if you want to otherwise I can show you how to kind of hide them in your woven creation. So this one's under so I'm gonna go over this one, so under the second string. And if you mess up and you really hate it, you can always um, unweave it so you can take it apart if you need to. You can definitely do that. And start all over again. There is nothing wrong with that. Right? So close. And you may notice your your yarn or your string may kind of get um, kind of fuzzy at the end, so you can always take your scissors and snip that if you want to. I'm just going to kind of struggle through it. And there may also be a there may be a plastic needle in your bag, so you can definitely um, tie your string to your needle, and you can use the needle to weave. I'm sure that would really help. You can definitely listen to music or watch your favorite show that 
helps you with this process. It kind of gets a little tedious, especially when you have to, um, when you go on to the next level and you have this gap and you push it up and you realize that you have so much more to weave than you thought you would. So for example, I have this gap right here and I tuck it up and so I have a lot more space to weave than I thought I did. All right, I'm going to experiment with this on texture right here. You should try to use that really that raffia like stuff that's really rough and kind of makes a fun crinkly noise when you handle it. And you're not may not be perfect since all these ribbon and yarn have different textures. And with the raffia stuff, you have to be very gentle with how you handle it. And only shed a, a little bit, maybe a little bit harder to weave through, so you may have to just gently move it along, along with your knots. I wonder if I can go, I wonder if this way would help. Almost there. I may finish this off a little early because I'm sure it's very boring to watch me do the weaving. <laughs> As you can see with the raffia, it's kind of starting to split up, split apart. I think after this raffia part, I may finish up. I'm gonna cut this a little bit. But for you, you wanna make sure you go all the way to the end. At the very bottom. So we're over this one, so we're going to go under for the next level. Over, under, over, and under, over, and under, over and under. And generally tug. Alright, so I'm under, so over. Sometimes you get, your brain gets a little muddled, so you just kind of have to talk yourself through it. I can't remember, I'll recall if I mentioned that already. There we go. Okay, so I have a little bit more left. I will do one more across. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to line this up. Good, ever so slightly. Great. I'm only doing another piece because I want to be, I want, I have a little bit more of a gap. And it, this process does get a little addicting. You just think, one more. And then 10 minutes later, you start working on it. I think that happens a lot with art. You say, you're almost done, you're, I'm going to finish right after I do this, and then you realize, oh, there's still more to do. Or you get so carried away with it that you can just continue doing it for another 10 minutes or an hour or day or month or week. We're almost done. We're almost done. Once you know how to do this um, weaving process, there's a re some really cool projects that you're able to do once you know how to weave. 
You can try basket weaving, which is a little bit, it's a little bit more complicated, but it's very satisfying to have your own basket. And you can put your picnic supplies in. after this row. Maybe. Nope. Let's do one more. I think we can do it. We can pull it off. I think we can. Alright. Over and under. Oh no! My yarn. Over. Under. Over. Under. Over. So under, over, and then under. All right, so when you think you're almost done, you're gonna get to the end. And so I have this piece right here. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna loop it through this end piece right here. So I'm going, so I was under for this part. So I'm gonna go over this one right here. So now I have a little loop like that. And I'm just gonna thread string through the loop like so. Here we go. I'm gonna just pull it tight. I think I'm gonna do a double knot just to make sure that it stays. So I'm going to go, you can go over on, on I mean, no, you should probably go under. So I'll go under this string right here. So I made another loop. And I'll just thread the string through the loop to make another knot. You can take your scissors and you can cut pretty close to the knot. And voila! You have your finished woven project, like so. And you can always, if, you, um, if you're getting really frustrated, you can always do your knot. And then later on you can continue on so you can tie in an, another knot to the string with another piece of yarn and you can just continue on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start finishing this up. So I'm gonna take this piece of yarn and I'm gonna cut, cut it a little bit so I don't have that piece of string hanging off. And if you want, you can leave your knots. So I have like some knots right here and here and here. If you wanna leave them there, that's totally fine. Otherwise, what you can do is you can kind of take your knot and you can kind of tuck it under your string. Maybe a little, little hard, especially with some of the thicker ones. But you can definitely do that if you so choose. It may take a little bit of time. But anyways, here is the finished pro um, product. As you can see what I was saying, it kind of bowed in a little bit. But that's totally fine, that will happen. But anyway, I really hope you enjoy this project and continue on weaving. Thank you.